What up, guys? It's good to be back. Hey, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe. I'm one of the pastors here. I get to play the fun role of being the youth liaison for missions. And so if you guys want to be equipped and trained in how to share the gospel, I'm your guy. It's fun to hang out with you guys. Hey, I got one little quick announcement before we get into this. If I can plug this in your groups, you're going to get a flyer like this. All right. So this is a win-win. We're going to break some news to you guys, uh, something we've been working on, and this is going to be a win-win. We, as in you guys, I don't know if you know this, but you guys are going to do this. You are sending a pioneer group out to Los Angeles over spring break to share the gospel all over Los Angeles, to engage with church, churches that are going to be run by young adults and teenagers, to learn from them, to bring it back here. And we are asking that if you guys love tacos, and let's be honest, everyone loves tacos, right? <laughs> right? To show up at Torchies on Spring Snoobner on Monday, for those of you that are looking for like a Valentine's Day, yes, it is the day before a Valentine's Day. And again, what says love more than tacos, right? And so show up, 15%, 15% of all the sales. If you hand them this flyer, you mention Woods Edge, goes toward this trip and helps spread the gospel out in Los Angeles and bring stuff back here. So please go do that. All right. Here we go. Well, as Justin said, we're going to be talking about anxiety. And as I saw your guys' hands, my heart broke. Because this is something that we're talking a lot about, and we need to talk about it here in the church. Because wherever you guys go, you hear more and more about anxiety. You see, when our parents grew up, they never talked about these type of things. Then my generation came along, we kind of started talking about it a little bit, and now it's become so popular in conversation. You guys, everywhere you turn, you're hearing these terms like mental illness and anxiety and depression and all these things coming at you, and we need to look at what the Bible actually says about this. All right, so guys, literally I called a Christian counselor in studying for this sermon. He said, Joe, do you know what's happening with teenagers today? He said, they're literally coming to me with their phones and showing me TikToks and Instagram reels and saying, I can relate with this. Do you think I have this disease? And that broke my heart. That the information we're getting about mental health is coming more from TikTok and Instagram and any other form of social media, not from the word of God. And guys, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is with you and he loves you even in the hardest times where things do not make sense. And we're going to look at that today. Well, first, we have to be very clear on what anxiety is. And so the American Psychological Association, they sound official, so I'm going to back up what they say, okay? Anxiety is an emotion characterized by feeling of tension, worries, worried thoughts, and physical changes like the increase of blood pressure. Let me stop at that. Do you guys realize anxiety as as like what I'm going to be talking about, I'm not going to be talking necessarily about a mental illness. I want to be talking about this emotion that is anxiety, which means as all of us feel happiness, sadness, anger, joy, and all these other emotions, every single one of us feels anxiety. And because of that, realize throughout all of scripture, God talks about our emotions. Like he talks about anger. He says, in your anger, do not sin. He doesn't say, do not be angry. Or he tells us to have joy at all times. Like he talks about emotions. And in scripture, he also talks about anxiety. It is an emotion. And so when we are anxious, we're looking for possible threats in our environment that might lead us to feel really tense, nervous, or unable to relax. Can you guys relate with that? Like you feel that? Like you're, you're, you're just like on edge, right? 
And, and so it could then lead us into a state of panic or a sense of dread. And we may feel like the world is kind of like speeding up around us or even slowing down at times when we get that feeling of anxiety. And see, guys, can I, can I hit on something that my buddy said um, and, and put it out there? Realize very quickly, this is an emotion. It is not a part of your identity. Like a lot of, a lot of teenagers today are kind of looking to tag themselves with some form of maybe even mental illness because the conversation is so popular that they have to relate with something that even one of my friends that I was talking about this, he's like, man, sometimes I feel bad if I can't tag myself with something. And that's where we're at in society that it's so popular that everyone wants to relate in some way and say, I have this or I have that. And then sometimes people like will tag and say, well, anxiety, which is an emotion now because I experienced it every once in a while, I'm an anxious person. So that's a part of my identity and this is just who I am. And God's telling you, no, your identity is in him and he wants to be there for you in the midst of it. And so a lot of people, like I said, wrestle with anxiety and struggle with anxiety and talk about anxiety and see anxiety comes in different forms. Sometimes, if we're honest, it's helpful. Like, think about this. We're living in this nice place called the Woodlands, Texas, where we have cars, we can drive around, we go to H-E-B, we go pick up our food, right? But there was a time in history where we as human beings had to go out into the woods and hunt for our food. Now, I've learned something because I would like to watch like National Geographic. I like to watch Discovery Channel. Humans are only, the only thing that goes hunting. And if there is a saber-toothed tiger in that woods with you, you're probably going to have a level of anxiety to keep you on edge to be able to survive in that moment. Does that make sense? So there are times like I've heard people say, I work better under pressure. Let's translate that to when I'm a little bit anxious and a little bit stressed, like my focus comes in a little bit clearer. It's a survival tactic that comes with all humans, okay? Does that make sense? Like, do you, like when you feel scared, maybe on like a ride, like at the theme park or something, that's that same thing. But also then there is unhelpful anxiety. These are spontaneous times where we worry and it really doesn't match the situation. Now, guys, Sometimes we bring this upon ourselves. Like we go and we watch the latest horror or thriller movie and then you go lay down in bed at night and you think something's living underneath your bed or in the closet and then all of a sudden your dog comes out and you lose your mind when you have no, yeah, I know, reaction, right? When you have no reason when the golden retriever just wants to cuddle, okay? Yeah, sorry, y'all. You know I love you, but y'all in Splash Zone. You know that, right? Okay, cool. Sweet. I spit when I got excited. That's what happened, okay? Let me. But then, guys, unfortunately, there are some of us who struggle with it, and there's this constant state of anxiety where it may fluctuate, but it's always there. It makes us feel like we're in a crisis all the time, and sadly, some experiences get really bad. So all that to be said, I think a lot of people struggle with this issue, myself included. There was times where I was in high stress situations, high anxiety level times where I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. And I, I felt like my heart was racing. I felt like a pit feeling in my stomach and I was just crippled. And so I can relate. But guys, as humans, because everyone struggles with us, so many of us are trying to find ways around it or cut corners and avoid it as a whole. And when we do that, we start trying to live in this isolated situation when we realize like, hey, this is emotion that a lot of us are going to feel. And same way, like, we're not trying to like isolate ourselves from joy. There's no way to really isolate ourselves from anger. Because guys, here's the reality I, I want you to hear. We live in a broken world. And because of that, situations are going to come up that are going to make us feel anxious. But because we live in a broken world, guys, we can't fix this on our own. Like, we need God to step in. 
the same way that he has saved us from our sins and he has redeemed us, he wants to step in and save and redeem our emotions. So today in scripture, we're going to look at a psalm. Now, most of the psalms were written by this man named David. Everyone say David. 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 So David was a king. He's one of the most greatest kings to ever live on the face of the earth. Now, David was described as a man after God's own heart, but he also understood this emotion of anxiety. Because in David's life, he, he faced wild animals and killed wild animals. There is a bug flying up there. I see that. Great. He faced wild animals. He was a shepherd. And so there was a time a bear came after him and a time that a lion came after him. And so he felt that level of anxiety, maybe that helpful anxiety, right? There was times where he was in wars, like this is David and Goliath. Do you think he felt some form of anxiety while going up against this huge giant that's sitting in front of him? There was times that other nations were chasing after him and he was running for his life. There was times even there, uh, his own son and the king that he served was chasing him to kill him. And he was hiding in caves, And so he understands this emotion. He understands this feeling. In the midst of it, he wrote psalms, which are songs that we now uh, are in scripture that we can learn from. And one of the most famous ones he wrote was Psalms 23. And a lot of you might know this one, but if you read this psalm in the face of anxiety, you will see how God wants to intervene and step into it. So it says this. It'll be on the screen. If you guys open up your Bibles, the book of Psalms is right in the middle. So if you open up towards the middle, you're going to be right close to it and go to Psalm 23. It says this. Ooh, I put my thing at the wrong, my other favorite Psalm. There we go. Okay. It says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk, check this verse. We're going to say this verse a lot. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close Beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Like I said, we're going to sit in that verse four because he talks about walking through the valley of the shadow of death or the darkest valleys to translate that to our lives, those really hard times, those dark periods of our lives. And we can look at that and we can see some truths about what he says around there. First, there are ways to go through the valleys. Did you guys catch that? even though I walk through the darkest valleys. See, in a broken world, we get un- anxious times are just uncomfortable for us, but God can still lead us through it. Like, we don't just have to skate it. We just don't have to avoid it. We just don't have to, like, try to isolate ourselves. But in the midst of it, God can walk us through it. And realize that as he's walking you through it, that means you are never alone when you feel anxious. Let me say that again. You are never alone when you're feeling anxious. Guys, right up here, hear me out in this. It breaks my heart so much to see how anxiety, depression, even suicide has ransacked your generation. And the lie of Satan is when you feel these emotions and you feel these things, he's going to say, you are all by yourself and no one else cares and no one relates with you. 
Guys, that is a lie from the pit of hell. He is with you. He's right there with you and he loves you so much. Please don't ever buy into that lie that you are by yourself. Did y'all look around when Justin said, how many of you struggle with anxiety? Nearly half of this group raised their hand. So just by that, you are not alone. Then you got community around you. You got leaders around you. You got God, the almighty creator there for you. You are not alone. And then God, because he helps us walk through it, makes a way for us to know that it will be okay. Now, I, I want you to know this because in the midst of the darkest valleys, it doesn't feel like it, does it? Like it looks like there's no way out for us. There's those times it's like, man, when is this ever going to end? But guys, what I mean by okay, okay may not mean cured or without anxiety or completely healed, but it does mean that you can be more okay than what you are feeling in the moment. It means, guys, we know that he is there. In the book of Philippians, it says this. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supple." supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus what this verse is saying in the midst of this like i said it doesn't mean that in the moment when we feel anxious that everything is taken care of everything is healed everything is cured but in the midst of this we can pray and call out to god and he, with thanksgiving even giving him praise in the middle of it and the peace of god did you guys catch that the peace of God that he wants to give you, it, no one can understand the level of the peace of God. It surpasses all understanding. No one can grasp it. No human in their brain can say, I got it. Like it's bigger than any of that. Surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we call out to him, we cry out to him in the midst of the anxiety, in the midst of that dark period, we say, God, I need you. I need your peace. He is wanting to send peace to you that will then guard you in the midst of that time, that he guards your mind that says, nope, we're not going there to those dark thoughts. Nope, we're not going there. He's going to guard your heart, guard your emotions and give it to Christ Jesus. Doesn't that sound so cool? Like, isn't that amazing? That we're there, that we're able to cry out to Almighty God, and He wants to give you peace. And guys, what I mean by peace, I want you to realize this, because I know life sucks sometimes, and it's hard. The junk that you guys are going through, my gosh, it it, it gets me angry watching the junk that you guys have to go through sometimes at no fault of your own. It does not mean, peace, hear me out on this, does not mean absent of trial or storm. Okay? It means security in the midst of the storm. Think about it this way. Think about a ship that's in the middle of a storm. All the waves are crashing on and everything, but the anchor is thrown out and is secured to the ground. It's saying, I'm looking out, I'm seeing all the storm, but I have more confidence in my anchor than what's going on around me. That I know I'm anchored in, I'm going to be still, I'm going to be okay, and when the storm passes and the morning comes, everything is going to be okay then. I love this picture. Uh, there's this painter. The story of it is this king asked these painters to draw a picture of peace. And, you know, all these guys started drawing doves and started drawing rainbows and all the happiness and, like, tranquility and all this stuff. One guy drew this. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but that doesn't look too peaceful to me, does it to you? Like, you got the waterfall crashing down. You got the storms going on around it. Some of you might be like, yep, that's what my life looks like right now. But I want you guys to focus. Underneath that waterfall, there's a little dove in the hut out of the cave. You guys see that? There's a little dove at the base of that cliff where it's shooting out. 
And that dove in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a waterfall, has the security of that little cave and he's experiencing peace. Guys, Jesus is our anchor. He is our refuge, our shelter. In the midst of this broken world, when the chaos is going around us, he wants to give you peace by resting in him. He wants you to be like that little dove. He wants to give relief in that moment. And how do I know that God wants, wants a way that it can be okay? Because in this passage, he is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. You see, the role of the shepherd is to protect and lead the sheep. Us as sheep, as the picture, we can't feed ourselves. We can't fend for ourselves. We can't do anything on our own. We need the shepherd. He has tools in here. It talks about a rod and talks about a staff because those guide us and lead us, but also fend off creatures like lions and bears and tigers. Oh my, you know, like all these different things that could be coming to devour us. Put whatever you want in your life that wants to devour you, that he wants to fend us from. And it says, Jesus said, these are in red in your Bible in John 10, I am the good shepherd. You see, he backed up what was said thousands of years before in Psalm 23 in John 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. He who is a, just a hired hand and not a shepherd, he does not know. Uh, does not own the sheep. He sees a wolf coming and he leaves and the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them up and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Guys, do you realize this is exactly what Jesus wants to do for you and he has done for you? In the face of sin and death and the curse of it all, he's already laid his life down for you. And he wants to do it again for us. He is committed to you and he loves you so much in the midst of it. And even though we don't see it, he, we may not see it, he right now is there for you and they're with you. Guys, so when it comes to application of what we need to do and how we walk through anxiety, it really doesn't matter. So if we go to TikTok, we go to Instagram, they're going to feed us a bunch of stuff about anxiety and depression. But are we willing to turn to Jesus in the midst of it? You see, first, guys, know this. If there's anything you catch, catch this. Know that God is with you and for you. It says in Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Now, you might read that and be like, who can be against me? Joe, depression, anxiety, suicide, you know, all these other things that are coming at me, right? But do you guys realize that it says, if God is for us? You see, that if in the Greek, it, the original language that it was written in, can be translated since. So it's assumed. Since God is for you, who can be against you? God, the creator of the universe, the one who spoke things into existence, who gathered dust from the ground and blew into it and life came. God is for you. Is. Present tense. Right now, you don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to like wait till later. It wasn't just in the past. He's not for you now. Is right now for you. For he's on your side. He is your biggest fan. He's cheering for you. He's not only just cheering for you. He wants to hold you and be with you. He is for you. Is in the past, it says us. This is a personal pronoun. Guys, if in, this was written to the church, so it's a plural in the moment, but if it's written directly to you, he is for you. So since God is for you, who can be against you? Do you guys understand the weight of that? That he is there for you in the midst when you feel anxious, when you feel down, he is right there for you. 
And some of you today who believe in Jesus just need that reminder that the almighty God is for you. But for those of you who are here like, yeah, I'm just here checking this thing out, or I think that girl's cute, so I just showed up because I want to hang out with her. Be honest, y'all do that, okay? Some of the guys were like, yeah. (laughs) That was awesome. Look, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, please know that we live in a broken world, but he's come to redeem it. And he's taken the curse of everything that's broken in this world upon him when he died on the cross, and he wants to have a relationship with you. The thing is, guys, he's a gentleman and he stands at the door and knocks and he needs to be invited in to a relationship with us. And so if you've not done that today, please talk to your community group leader and say, I can't relate with what Joe is saying because I don't have a relationship with Jesus. But man, I'd really love for him to walk with me in this anxiety stuff. So guys, the other thing, uh, application wise, please talk about it. Don't be scared to talk about anxiety. Everyone else is, all right? First, talk about it with God. He knows what you're feeling and he wants to be there with you and for you. Please, like the pastor says, with prayer and supplication, trust, talk to a trusted adult, your community group leader, one of the pastors here, a parent, talk to someone about it. We're here to help you. Talk with your community. Guys, how many, like w- during Freedom Weekends, you all feel like closer together? Like you could go take the world over? Like you, you're like, bring it on. We're going to go get it, right? Like because your community, you're tight. So if you're struggling, talk to your friends about it. If they're godly friends, they're going to point you back to Jesus, okay? And guys, I, in all seriousness, if it is something that is crippling you, please, there's no shame in reaching out to a professional, Like, there's a stigma about maybe going out to counseling that we're all broken. Well, newsflash, we are. So it's okay to go talk about it with someone else that knows how to coach you in that. Guys, I'm like over my time by a minute, but this is how I wanted to end. So when Justin gave me this topic, I was like, thanks, man. That's an easy one. (laughs) Um, So I just started praying and said, God, what, what do you want me to share? And that night... I opened up this children's Bible. If you've never read this, go pick one up. It's the Jesus Story Bible, Storybook Bible. Like, I'm not telling, I'm not kidding. Every story points to Jesus. And it's like the most amazing truth ever. Even as like the guy with the Bible degree, I'm like reading through this. I'm like, this is amazing. (laughs) Like, where was this when I was growing up? Y'all spoiled. All right. But look. I picked up this, this Bible, Bible, going to a uh, storybook Bible to read with my kids. And this is what I read. This is based off the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 6, Matthew 9, and then Luke 12. Hear this out. This is the coolest way to put it, and then we'll close out. So wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, and worried people, if we can say anxious people. Lots of them worrying about the things of life. What if we don't have enough food? Or what if we don't have enough clothes? Or what if we run out of money? Or what if there isn't enough? And is everything going to go wrong? And won't we be all right? What then? Sound familiar? Like y'all wrestle with that stuff? I've been there. Listen, shh. When Jesus saw all the people, his heart filled with love for them, and they were like sheep without, without a shepherd, and he wanted to care for them. So Jesus sat them down, and he began to talk with them. He said, you see those birds over there? Everyone looked at them. There's just these little sparrows pecking at the seeds on the path. He goes, where do they get their food? Do they go to the pantries that are all stocked up? Did they go to cabinets that are full of food? Everyone laughed because who's seen a bird ever pushing a shopping cart? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about those flowers over there? Everyone looked and there was roses and daisies and pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or did they go to work every day so they could go buy them? Or did they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on clothes? Jesus said, no, 
They don't need to worry about that because God clothed them with royal robes of, of splendor. Not even a king is as dressed as well as them. Little flock. Check this. Jesus calls us and says, little flock, like he loves us because he does. You are more important than the birds. You're more important than the flowers. The birds and the flowers don't have to sit and worry about these things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after those birds and flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would make would always love and watch over the world that he made. Everything in it, the birds, the flowers, the trees, and everything, but most of all, his children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds had not forgotten, the flowers had not forgotten, they were still singing a song. It was a song of all God's creatures had sung from the very beginning. It, it was a song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us, he loved us, and he is so pleased with us. It was why Jesus had come to the world to sing to them the most wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life, so that God's children would remember it and sing it too. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, this world's scary. So many times we feel anxious, but God, we recognize that is the motion that you have given us, and we submit it to you. Jesus, will you please help us to go to and run to you when we feel anxious? Jesus, you will walk us through it, and I praise you for that. Thank you for being the good shepherd and loving us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.